in this video we are going to learn about the introduction to semiconductors semiconductors are the materials whose electrical property lies between those of conductors and the insulators from the name itself you can say that there is a term semi semi means half its properties lies somewhere between conductor and insulators alternatively it can be defined as a substance which has a resistivity in between those of conductors and insulators is called as a semiconductor so semiconductors have other properties as well it can be defined on the basis of energy band gap as well semiconductors have various characteristics such as it has negative temperature coefficient of resistance semiconductors do not follow ohm's law the electrical conductivity is very much effective and the resistivity of the semiconductor depends on the elimination types of semiconductors generally there are two types of semiconductors elemental and compound here from the name itself we can understand that elemental which consists of a single element and compound it is the combination of two what are the possible semiconductor materials you know that class 4 consists of number of elements but out of those four how many elements can be used you have to study in detail you have studied the periodic table earlier so you can see that in class 4 there are various possible elements like carbon silicon germanium all these elements are known as the semiconductors but you have to study in detail what are the characteristics which particular semiconductor materials can be used for electronic application or which cannot be used or what are the factors behind this we can study in detail in this table we have five elements like carbon silicon germanium tin and lead you can see for carbon it is very expensive and the band gap is very large 6 electron volt in case of silicon it's very cheap and it's high pure in germanium it is high mobility and high pure in case of tin only white tin is a semiconductor in case of lead only white lead is a semiconductor so each and every elements have its own characteristics for what the semiconductors are used for or for which application it is used okay germanium are widely used in early days of semiconductor developments it was used too much for the construction of transistors and diodes in the case of silicon it is now used for majority of rectifiers transistors and integrated circuits compounds are used in high speed devices and in those devices which require the emission of absorption of light for example led if you compare silicon and germanium most commonly used semiconductor is silicon what is the importance of a semiconductor some of the advantages of the semiconductors are they are highly portable require less input power they are shock proof longer life span and the very important one is it is noise free while operating industrial use of semiconductors what are the areas in industries the semiconductors are used and why the physical and chemical properties of the semiconductors make them capable of designing like microchips transistors leds etc the microprocessor used for controlling the operation of space vehicles trains robots etc is made up of transistors and other controlling devices which are manufactured by semiconductor material why silicon is preferred over germanium the leakage current is less in silicon as compared to that of germanium in silicon it is nano ampere that is 10 power minus 9 in germanium it is micro ampere 10 power minus 6 if you compare 10 power minus 6 and 10 power minus 9 the leakage current is less in silicon but why the atomic number of silicon is 14 and the atomic number of germanium is 32 if you see its configuration 
the k l m cells of silicon it is 2 8 and 4 and for germanium it is 2 8 18 and 4 so in this case of silicon the outermost orbit where the four electrons are available that is it is the third cell while in germanium the outer is fourth cell so you can say that germanium distance from nucleus is high compared to that of the silicon because this is in fourth cell and this is in third cell so since the distance from the nucleus is high thus the force of attraction is weaker so in this case what will happen even if you are applying small temperature the electrons will have the tendency to move from their orbit so at very small temperature the leakage current is more in germanium as compared to that of the silicon therefore silicon is preferred over germanium and the second factor is that germanium becomes unstable at the high temperatures and the advantage of silicon is it is very cheaper and it's more available on earth bonding in semiconductors what kind of bonding is there in a semiconductor in the case of semiconductor covalent bond exists covalent bond is also known as the molecular bond it is the chemical bond that involves the sharing of electron pairs between atoms you can see in this figure there are four electrons in the outer cell and in its neighbor there will be another silicon atom and each and every silicon atom will have four electrons in outer cell so by sharing there will make a bond which is known as the covalent bond what is the difference between a semiconductor and a conductor in a semiconductors it have negative temperature coefficient of resistance a negative temperature coefficient means the resistance increases with increase in temperature for conductors it have positive temperature coefficient of resistance positive temperature coefficient it means the resistance increases with increase in temperature the conductivity of a semiconductor is less than a conductor but the conductivity of a semiconductor is more than a insulator but how the conductivity of a semiconductor is controlled or increased it is by doping so doping is a process of addition of impurities to a pure semiconductor energy band diagram first is the valence band so the valence band is the outermost band filled with electrons filled means all the states are occupied conduction band is the next highest band to the valence band it is empty or partially filled this band occupied by free electrons which are responsible to conduction forbidden energy gap it is the difference between the valence and the conduction band is called as a forbidden energy gap so the energy band diagram of a conductor semiconductor and a insulator in this particular diagram the first is for the conductor you can see the valence band bottom one in red color the upper one represents by blue color is the conduction band in case of conductor there is no band gap means these bands may overlap electrons are easily available in conduction band participate in conduction process while in case of semiconductor you can say that in between the valence band and conduction band there is a very narrow band gap which is about 1 electron volt but in case of insulator this band gap is wider is approximately 5 electron volt from this particular diagram you can say that in case of semiconductor when small increase in temperature or energy is been provided to the electrons are available in valence band they can easily move to the conduction band to participate in conduction process while it is difficult in case of insulators because here band gap is very wide so very huge amount of energy is required so that the electrons can move to the conduction band what is the band theory of a solid we know how many kinds of bands are possible conduction band valence band forbidden energy gap how a solid is formed by bringing together isolated single atoms a solid is formed let us consider the combination of two atoms if atoms are far apart there are no interaction between them 
the energy levels are same for each atom if the atoms are close together the electron wave functions will overlap and the energy levels are shifted with respect to each other a solid will have millions of atom close together in a lattice so these energy levels will create a band each separate by a gap this is very important point because a million of atoms exist over there so energy level of each and every atom is being combined so it will create a band 